Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Modern Web. Today, we are talking about a really hot topic, which is web platform and standards. So we have two really awesome folks here, uh, Amal and Jory, who are joining us. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I feel like this is maybe one of the first uh, Modern Web ones where we have all women. So this is another reason why I'm super stoked, especially <laughs> talking about something so important, which is web standards. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much for joining us. So uh, I wanted to just dig right in because I know there's a lot to say. Um, but I think first off, you know, I know I've been doing a lot of work on trying to get developers to care about the platform. And so maybe we can start with just why. Why are web standards important to developers? Why should people even care? Oh, why should people care? I suppose they, the answer isn't just because I care and I think you should too, which is kind of my default. Um, but uh, I think why this matters to the general uh, population of developers is that it's important for us to have the shared understanding of how our technologies work so that we can build uh, software that's compatible um, and, and for, for, for all, that works for everyone. Um, from that shared uh, place, we can start to think about other concerns like um, addressing security, addressing um, accessibility, addressing internationalization. If, if these things don't exist on, uh, on top of a shared standard, then we're never going to have um, uh, tools that, that really address those very, very critical issues. Um, I'm, I'm curious what Amel thinks, why Amel thinks it's important though. Yeah, Amel is nodding, uh, you know, furious, furiously here, um, and I, I just I, I totally agree with uh, with Jory. Um, for, for me, the internet is is it's like a utility that's at this point it's it's kind of strange that we pray private companies for the internet. Really, it should just be uh, part of our utility bills, just like we pay electricity. Um, but it's 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 the greatest thing that we've ever made, and it's given an, us an opportunity to connect with everyone in the world potentially, uh, and. And so given that it's a platform that people use for banking, for, you know, literally, uh, you know, uh, employing themselves, uh, you know, meet not, not just like the frivolous things that you think of, like cat, photo, cat photos, uh, it's, it's an important platform and we need to make sure that people are building for it and, um, and securing its kind of long, 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 longevity um, and that kind of, it really it requires a collaboration of you know, many different people who are developing for different use cases. And, you know, the use cases of the web are also growing as, you know, technology is shifting. And so, um, like, it's, it's important to kind of always, it, it, to, to be evolving the web, um, but also making sure that, you know, it's, it's inclusive and it's, it's serving its utilitarian purpose um, as well. Yeah, the web is definitely utility and it doesn't work when the houses across the street from each other have different connections for their utilities. So why would that work for the web? It doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, um, and, and, and because of that, uh, it's important that the same way people participate in civics, you know, and in, in, in political discourse, uh, and they care about their elected officials, you know, people should care about the things that go into making the tool that, you know, they use on a daily basis, the tool that they use to sustain themselves. Uh, and, and while it's a privilege to be kind of talking about the web platform under the hood, because it's, it's not, you know, that experience isn't the case for most people. For us that are privileged to be able to understand how the platform works, you know, it's, it's equally important for us to make sure that we're engaged in like the conversation around how it's built. Um, yeah. And that those privileged people who understand the platform are also representative of, of the world, right? Because right now it's, it's really not. Mm -hmm. It's another thing that's... So we've established why standards are, of course, important. And I think that was a really good summary of why, you know, why people should actually care and listen and, you know, want to get involved. But then, then we should kind of go into, you know, what is the standards process? You know, what, what does that even look like? I, I think a lot of uh, JavaScript developers hear TC39. They're like, okay, it's this thing and people meet. All right. Um, but can you guys elaborate more on that? 
Yeah, so um, it can feel like this opaque uh, process that just exists sort of tangentially to a developer's everyday work. And, you know, that's not an unfair characterization because, quite frankly, it kind of can be. Um, the web standards development process echoes the way a lot of other standards um, are made. Standards exist for all kinds of different things, electricity, uh, consumer products, rubbers, plastics, telecom, you know, building materials, all of those things have um, standards for size, safety, manufacture, you know, quality, that kind of thing. Um, and the way those groups work generally is through um, industry consortia. Um, these are companies that make these products uh, getting together arguing for quite some time, probably in subcommittees, uh, and then ultimately producing some document that says a two by four is exactly this and it bears this much weight and da 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 da. Well, we kind of do the same thing in uh, web standards. Um, our industry consortia are the W3C um, and ECMA International, which is the organization that is the home of TC39, the subcommittee that focuses on JavaScript. There are other committees at ECMA International that focus on other things. Um, there are lots of different committees at the W3C. Most of those do focus on the web. So um, the uh, people who attend those meetings, who are members of TC39, are um, or delegates, I should say, of TC39, their companies have paid membership dues to these organizations so that these delegates can go and um, essentially debate with one another, um, you know, what, what we should do on the web. That's sort of the, the high level context of the back end of this process that maybe a lot of people don't know. I know Amel um, will probably happily speak to the proceedings of uh, the TC39 in more, more specifically, if you want to answer that half of the question, Amel. Yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of don't want to beat the TC39 horse too much. I think people understand it's a committee that is, you know, formed of delegates um, uh, that uh, help, uh, you know, push the language forward uh, and, you know, as well as kind of uh, manage the, the specification and the conformance specifics for JavaScript. Um, so super important body, but like, I think I want to highlight a point that Joy was, some points that Joy were, was making. Um, which are that there are many different types of standards. And so even within the web community, TC39 is one uh, standard, it's just one standards bot uh, entity that, uh, or committee that is um, part of, you know, uh, the uh, different standards bodies that um, make up, mm -hmm. contribute to the web. So there's W3C, what, um, what wig, um, Jory can probably tell you more. IDF, um, yeah. Yes, there's, yeah, so there's like this whole body of, of things. Um, but I, I kind of also, I, I want to take a step back from that and, and say that, um, you know, that these, that um, the, have you have you have has anyone tried to open up like an iOS six app in like an an iPhone eleven or an iPhone ten lately or you know, or really old Android <laughs> app and you know in a modern phone and and that your your s your s l you're out of luck right if if you try to do that it's just not going to happen and the reason like the, like the mobile community is like a like a great counter to like un, um, understanding why the open web is so important, right? So these are, they're companies, Google and Apple that govern, you know, the APIs, uh, what goes in, what goes out, what apps can do, what they can't do. It's one body, one entity, one company with all of the blind spots that you can imagine comes with that responsibility. And so creating a product that's like for the world, you know, and that one group uh, um, c c controls the APIs, there's like no, um, notion of uh, don't break Android, don't break iOS, right? Mm -hmm. So you, <laughs> breaking changes happen all the time and it's just part, of, it's what mobile developers have to do. And on the flip side with, with the open web, you know, if you have a website that was built using, you know, like standard uh, things that were part of the standard, you know, like high likelihood that you're going to be able to experience it the same way in a modern browser, even if it's like a 20 year old website. And so, yeah, that's the beauty of the web. And so it's important that, so these standards like, 
depending on what type of a standard it is, like it can take years to develop. Um, but it's really, it's important that we go through the due diligence of, of that process because, you know, we really try not to break the web, right? And I think Jory can kind of maybe elaborate on some mm -hmm. like cases where we have broken the web and like what, you know, what, what that what that's like but that's the only reason why i can't say like we never break the web because it, it does happen uh but i think there's exceptions to that and i guess story do you want to kind of oh yeah okay yeah so so there's so many so many good points that that i f fully support like one is you know i i totally agree that um we should be highlighting the fact that these standards are made across multiple groups um and through their collaboration and through um better uh, communication, then we we end up creating standards that um, and and uh, plans that actually lo are long lived, that actually get used, that people adopt and um, create uh, a, you know a, a supportive structure that like strength strengthens the web when we work in that fashion. Um, so it's it is important. I totally agree not to overweight like one. Um, particular uh, committee over another uh, in terms of what you know what they're doing because they're all we're all together uh, working to, to provide this fabric of support and that's um, that's you know ma massively important and another you know big um, kind of point that I agree with Amel here on is that um, the this process this like this system um, as complex as it is um, is also kind of simple and it is helping to um, ensure that our users and that we as developers aren't getting locked in to one particular or two particular companies strategies for their own platforms and their own technologies right because to Amel's point you know if they um, if if Apple decides, you know, to drop support uh, for something or to stop, you know, um, stop development of, of, you know, certain technologies, then it's like, okay, well, you're SOL, like, if that's where, if that's, if that was the platform you're targeting, targeting, there's not much you can do about it. Um, and the web provides that alternative and it, an increasingly important alternative, as more and more of our devices are um, mobile you know, the, the, and, and not even uh, necessarily uh, what we think of as traditional computers, but also like, you know, um, resource constrained uh, devices that we may need to communicate with. Um, you know, we think of these novelty kind of things like nests and human and, and home automation things, but in other parts of the world, those, uh, those technologies are more critical. Um, so, yeah, so when, when we say things like, you know, it's a mandate or it's an important, uh, um, you know, for our committee not to break the web, we don't want to break backwards compatibility, we're thinking about that depth of um, work that has already gone into the language and supporting all of those devices that may be running really critical pieces. <coughs> Sorry, ranted. Yeah, I I, um, I could couldn't agree with with you more, uh, Jory. This is like the most fun like podcast ever because like you just have two like or three women. Hopefully, they're just constantly agreeing with each other. Um, <laughs> like, take take notes, everybody. Um, it can happen. Uh, but but uh, but Jory, um, I, I think there's an important point to hi highlight, which uh, you know, I, I realized listening to to your last statements which is that you know the browser is not a document reader it's no longer a document mm -hmm. reader and so i think it's there's a lot of legacy that comes with what the web right mm -hmm. and it's legacy that isn't necessarily there for apple or google that can yeah. just you know, make it ma major breaking changes and just totally you know re like decide they want to re-architect everything from scratch and like you know it's a it's a whole it's a whole new world uh f for them every few months and so um, th there's a lot of uh, legacy that you carry forward, even not breaking the web, right? It, mm -hmm. it makes implementing new standards and features more difficult when you have to take into account like, okay, how many people in India are relying on this feature? Oh, it looks like a lot, maybe not so many in the US, right? Or, yeah. or, or, or th like things like that happen all the time. And so how do you push a, push a platform forward, you know, keep the same house basically yeah. going and where you're able to kind of build annexes that don't annex each other, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and so, so I think that's like a very interesting challenge. Um, and I think another thought on that is that 
uh, one of, I think, the frustrating, um, one of the frustration points, I think, for a lot of developers around the web platform is because they're like, Jesus Christ, like, this is not how to build a web app. You know, every time I'm creating a complex web application, I'm like, gosh, the web sucks for building web apps. Like, the DOM sucks for this thing. Like, you know, we should have better ways to do it. And, and you see that when you're exposed to, like, how game developers write things or, you know, just lots of other programming languages, you know, user interfaces are a lot, like, a lot less work. Mm -hmm. you know um but here we have these three primitives and you know so we're we're kind of we're operating within the constraints of you know what tim berners lee was thinking the web was for him which was like hey i need to share a bunch of files and uh, or, or like documents with my yeah. colleagues in other parts of the world right yeah. and so so the browser is no longer a document reader but we're working with the tools like mm -hmm. you know a lot of tools of like and legacy like with those constraints. And so um, I, I personally think, I don't think we talk about this enough and I'm really happy that like, I'm getting to say this like on record. Um, but I, I think we, we don't address that frustration enough from developers. And there's like an opportunity here to really push that educationally um, for our community, for them mm -hmm. to understand like, hey, yeah, this sucks and you know, React and Angular and all these frameworks are trying to you know, jump hoops around the browser because you know, we have a lot of debt. And I think it's, it's, it's good to kind of take a step back and understand really what the web means. What's the breadth of this thing? You know, I mean, it's not just you know, for your 2000 users. You know? It's like, mm -hmm. it's for everybody. Like, what does that mean? You know? and, uh, and it can't break, right? Uh, and so, so with all those constraints in mind, I think there's a lot of kind of the web platform has failed us, that, that kind of a, a sentiment, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's just, it's really disheartening um, because you see people who are so brilliant and so humble. And I say this because like I was an, a, a developer that really wasn't exposed to web platform, uh, kind of a lot of web platform, um, like the, the whole community around standards and developing, you know, under the hood. That's a world that's, you know, new to me as of, you know, uh, shortly before joining Boku. So, you know, about two years. And so it's, it's been a, an educational, like I, it's been, a, I've been, um, it, it's been a, an educational train wave, I guess. <laughs> roller coaster. <laughs> roller coaster. That's the good, that's, you know, and, and I think for me, I'm just starting to put together the pieces of like, oh, I think there's such a disconnect between these two communities because, you know, that no one really addresses that historical like fact. Mm. It's like the elephant in the room that no one's really talking about. And, you know, I think it's yeah. something that we should try to talk about and we should be doing advocacy for. And like, maybe, you know, Jory and I will be working on that together um, in, the, in the near future. <laughs> so um, that, that kind of brings me to another, another thing, <laughs> which is with standards, it's, it's kind of like this ominous thing. I mean, I feel like people feel the same way about open source in general, right? Like you have, you have developers who are afraid of open source and then you have open source developers who are afraid of standards. <laughs> Maybe yeah. Next level. But like, how do people get involved or what should they think about these uh, Twitter arguments? Uh, <laughs> you know, how, like, do, you know, from, from an outside view, sometimes it looks like, okay, people just argue and yell on Twitter about standards and then things get implemented or don't. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I, I try and talk about both of these, uh, things as just different approaches to a similar problem, right? Like, um, open source and standards are both trying to solve issues related to interoperability, um, and issues of like innovation. Um, and, but they're just going about it, um, from vastly different perspectives and different, you know, um, you know, oftentimes experiences. The standards world tends to be dominated by um, uh, the corporate conversation because standards are extremely important from an economic um, and market development standpoint. That's, you know, governments require standards for um, all kinds of software. Companies require standards for all kinds of software um, so that they can meet service agreements. They can meet, you know, um, policy requirements, that kind of stuff. It's, there's a very thick thicket of stuff uh, that means for, for the most part that tends to be led by uh, the, those kind of populations uh, of folks. On the flip side, you have um, 
generally a lot of engineers, a lot of technologists really adopting um, more open source approaches to issues of collaboration and interoperability and that kind of thing, because it's a little bit, it's more freewheeling, you know, you just say, okay, we're going to, we're going to try this. We're going to throw some spaghetti here. We're going to get everybody in a room. We're going to, um, you know, uh, collaborate in a very, um, looser fashion, uh, which I think is quite a bit of fun. It's to me a little bit more fun than the standards way of working, but, um, and it's, it's also seems to be more accessible. It feels more accessible to more people because it, it feels more inclusive of different stakeholder views. For one, you don't have to have, you know, a law degree to understand patents before you go jump into an open source conversation. So these, these are different um, approaches to this, this shared problem, and they're kind of trying to come together. There's this, there's different movements happening within um, our standards bodies and within our software foundations to start inching toward um, each other on that on that spectrum um, and figure out uh, programs and ways to communicate and ways to interoperate with um, with with folks in the open source world and folks in the in the standards world um, I think what you often see play out though on Twitter well Twitter's just like a maybe just not a good place <laughs> maybe maybe that's really what it comes down it's the to. underworld <laughs> yes <laughs> Did somebody say Twitter? <laughs> just like wait a second. Twitter, let's just don't just, go there. I'm <laughs> just gonna start saying the word Twitter in creepy voices. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> it really does not bring out the best of any of these conversations. Um, and I just I and I think I think that some of these issues are too complex to be resolved or discussed in a in a productive way on Twitter. And so yeah. if you my mom said if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Don't leave your house until yes. you can. That's my that's my <laughs> motto. <laughs> if you can't say anything nice, don't leave home. You know? Yes. Um but uh, yeah so so to so Jory, another plus a million. Um so <laughs> Basically, like the like the push pull of these two things, you know, standards and uh, and um, you know uh, uh, open source projects that are you know that kind of develop their own APIs or conventions are like it's super important because you know web developers they pave the cow paths for innovation on the web, you know, and web developers are forever, in my opinion, like the most ingenious and innovative like humans on the planet um, because you know we work and on the most hostile environment in like the in the in the most uh, ever shifting you know uh, kind of landscape you know it, it's it's like basically trying to do heart surgery in a room that's having an earthquake but like there's a snowstorm going outside and like the seasons are also changing from spring to summer you know it's it's chaos like developing up for the web it really is and so um, there's a lot of creativity that goes into into like how, how do we create better user experiences how do we create better applications that are more resilient fast secure performant um and all of that innovation comes from web developers doing it first or game developers you know and then web developers <laughs> so and so um ultimately like being able to iterate and kind of refine those things uh without the cost of doing it on the on the platform right like implementing a feature across multiple browsers and then deciding, oh, this sucks, let's change it. Like it's a very costly thing. And um, having, giving developers a chance to, uh, to kind of lead, lead the lead the way here makes the most sense. And a great example of that is like promises, you know, where uh, a, a bunch of libraries were doing the same thing in a different way. And then people st started standardizing on a, uh, a plus promise pattern and uh, a convention. So a bunch of libraries that were doing promise related things, you know, uh, decided to now be interoperable and, you know, and then that, that API eventually, you know, was kind of really helpful in driving and defining pr how we implemented promises, you know, in JavaScript. And so, you know, that's, that's a prime example of how like, it's really important, but there's a natural tension there. And I don't think it's something that we should ever strive to like, uh, change or eliminate like I think that's a healthy tension that's like the same mm -hmm. tension that you have between marketing and sales and uh, and product and design and engineering like that tension you know it's necessary to kind of keep keep people honest and keep keep progress like you know 
I, I agree with that. Um, I think there's, there's moments of, you know, conflict and tension in, within this conversation that are um, actually quite productive. Like there's, and there's a big difference really when you get that productive tension versus the kind that, you know, plays out negatively on Twitter. Um, and it's kind of a big learning exercise for our disparate communities to go through to figure out how we all participate in these conversations productively even through disagreement, right? Because that, that's kind of the nature of um, this level of collaboration we are all going to have to, you know, come to the table, both respecting that we have perhaps um, different needs, we have different use cases, but we all want, you know, a solution that's going to work, um, that's going to be respectful of, you know, uh, lots of different, that doesn't necessarily value one, one um, set of users over another, that's going to be respectful of, um, of the relationships too that are required to sustain this system, right? Because if one party comes in and they're like, you know, well, it's our way or the highway and, you know, we know what's right and da 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 da, -da what you're saying is I don't value the um, relationships and the work that these other communities may have put into their own needs and understanding their own um, uses and so, you know, screw, screw that. Well, that doesn't exactly set the stage for like healthy you know conversation um, and that's that that's the kind of pattern that we really need to um, avoid it's just too easy for people to come in and pop and start like you know totally dissing moo tools and things that existed a long time ago those were really helpful for people um, no need to hate on it yeah okay it's not something you really want to use today but like don't be you know you really couldn't have come up with anything better back then either. So simmer down there. You know, that's my, my two cents. About it, but. Yeah, have, have empathy. Have empathy and have respect for the tools and the, the things that came before you that helped us innovate further, right? I mean, right. every library that is now outdated, like help the preceding library, help the succeeding library, you know, right. uh, move that much faster. So we're all really standing on the shoulders of giants here. And there's definitely, again, this goes back to some of the education and advocacy piece that we really need to do for our community. Be humble, you know, because yeah. it's a humbling industry and it's a humbling job. And, you know, if you think you're smart, like I'll find 20 million people that are smarter than you. Right. <laughs> like, right. So just like, you know, on, know what you know, know what you don't know and be yeah. okay with not knowing everything and know that like your best skill as an engineer is like being humble, like knowing, yeah. when, to say, knowing when to say I don't know and also learning to learn rapidly, yeah. right? And yeah. so like, yeah. I, anyways, all of that. Be, be humble, sit down, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. even if you look at the landscape of, you know, of even uh, let's say maybe five years ago or so, looking at where TC39 was and kind of how people perceived it. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like the perception is changing, but I remember it was very much, oh, you know, just a bunch of dudes in a room. Is there any diversity? And then uh, you know, people posting on Twitter, and then I don't know if it was people kind of getting called out and thinking, oh, maybe we should invite women to the table or something. But we, we're starting to see, and it's, it's not just women, right, but just like more diversity in general. Yeah. And what I've seen is this landscape starting to change within the standards body to be more inclusive, uh, you know, YouTube being involved, for example, uh, Daniel, Dan, Dan Ehrenberg, uh, being really involved in kind of trying to start these initiatives, it's really become a more, I don't know, nicer place to be in a sense. At least that's the way it feels to me. Yeah. I mean, that, that's true. Um, so definitely Dan Ehrenberg and Leo Balter need to be, um, you know, uh, given a shout out here for their hard work about five, six years ago, I guess at this point, I don't know, it all blends together, um, getting the TC39 to um, adopt a code of conduct. And I think, it, it, you know, it's been, it's been really interesting um, because about that time is also when I started getting more involved in, in the committee. Um, that's, that I, I have seen certainly, uh, and it felt a, a change um, in, during meetings, during the proceedings, um, that has, has gone from just being a bit 
sometimes tense and adversarial to, or tense and adversarial, it's sometimes outright just sort of like, you know, um, aggressively like, you know, aggressive conflict um, to more thoughtful conversation. And I, there's another tool that we're, we're tweeting about last night and this morning that Brian Turleson created called TCQ app. And that's also gone a long way to just help um, give people a moment to collect their thoughts uh, before speaking. You know, it's that think before you speak. A lot of times when you really care about a topic, you're like, boom, I'm just going to sort of start, you know, like I'm doing now, just boom, spew all, all of my, my um, really important thoughts uh, to you. But the, the TCQ app is a moderating tool for this meeting room full of like 60 people at this point to be able to stop and you know think a little bit more um, I've also before asking a question um, or, or, or responding to to a question um, I've also noticed that there's just tends to be more of a um, pattern of folks thanking each other and also um, fair, being kind of quick to say I'm sorry I was out of line um, that's that kind of decorum um, is just just really, really important in terms of changing the tenor and the, um, you know, the environment atmosphere of that meeting room. If you walk in and you have this aggressive sort of like, I'm not going to apologize for what I say, uh, then you're going to kind of get a lot of that heat back. But, you know, if, when you start to get some, some key people who are willing to come in and say, hey, that time I said X, I shouldn't have said that I was wrong. Like, oh my gosh, that changes like the dynamic in, in a big, big way. And so I want to thank a lot of the um, committee um, folks who for, for just sort of starting to, to get there and really think more, um, uh, more critically and, and uh, also for supporting the work of the Code of Conduct Committee as well. That's been a huge, um, sh huge shift. It was something that was approached with some skepticism at first and now it's like, no, we're, we're glad this is here and this is helping us. So um, yeah, that's, that's another huge thing. Yeah, I, I want to also say shout out to Jory for helping with that process as well. I know you were really involved with the Code of Conduct Committee for the TC39. So um, I have a, one quick point I want to make before we get into our last topic, uh, which um, is uh, that I think I'm really excited to see like a lot of like, I think there's a lot of new phases, a lot of participation in, in different types of standards conversations around web technologies. Um, but I think one, one thing I do want to really kind of point out here, which is like might be an unpopular opinion and that's okay, uh, is that like, I think there's an importance in like understanding and this kind of also comes from the empathy and factor and also just like be humble attitude. Uh, there's importance in just observing and being a, a student first, right? So I, I see a lot of people kind of come into standard stuff like for the first time and then they're like, oh, I have a new piece of syntax that I want to propose to the language like right now or like, you know, and so there's there's a lot of, um, yeah, I, like I, I slow your roll a little bit that needs to kind of, I think, happen in, in particular with, with TC39 uh, for people who have like all these just, I don't know, there's so many new proposals for so many things and a lot of stuff is just syntactic sugar and so there's a lot of like need to kind of understand some of the history behind like developing javascript and why certain decisions were made why, why why certain things were successful and not successful and so you really try to understand like what the concerns are of all the people that contribute to the specification and so you know without having that kind of armor in your in your and you're on your on yourself you, you know you you can kind of uh you're you're easy prey for a lot of like i think mistakes and like you know, missteps and whatnot and so like like observe your surroundings like learn and like really try to invest in understanding like what's going on or you know finding find find a mentor who, who will help you come up to speed with with certain things uh because really you know there's so much historical knowledge that really is required to be extremely effective right and you you can be effective without that but um like it's as much about the pro the like the history and the, the people and the organizations involved and you know the four major browser vendors it's as much about that as it is at the actual tech you know and so uh, mm -hmm. you know so that's just an important thing i just don't see people really valuing uh, <laughs> yeah don't just yell on Twitter and think that your problem is going to get solved. Yeah, exactly. Figure out the process, figure yeah. out people who are involved and maybe start 
uh, a little bit more gently <laughs> than just Twitter rant, yeah. No. So we only have a few more minutes left, but uh, maybe like each one of you can give, you know, your favorite new thing that's coming to the platform and we'll end with that. <laughs> mm, okay, Mel can go first because I, I always have a problem picking favorite things. Yeah, well, I guess a point that I really wanted to discuss is that like why standards are more, more like important now more than ever, you know, and I know Jory can probably like chime in on this too. Yeah. This is that like, we are at the peak of, of kind of innovation on so many levels and the web is going into so many new spaces, you know, embedded mm -hmm. devices, et cetera. Uh, you know, the web is like becoming a more, uh, more universal, like uh, kind of connection between all these different devices and things. And, and so it's really important that we, uh, like now more than ever, I think standards are, are, are important because as you know, our devices are shifting and access to the internet is growing. You know, it's important that like, A, we are kind of putting a lot of brain power into thinking about how do we best design APIs that are going to work for us, you know, when our devices are smaller, when our device, you know, when, when, when all of these, all of these things happen, but then also, you know, there's ephemeral web and there's a, a lot of other technologies around AR and VR that also shift the web into a whole mm -hmm. new space, right? So there's so many more places that it's going and there's a lot, lot of things to think about from, from that perspective. On the other side, it's also extremely important because we have like all these new internet users, millions and millions of people coming online for the first time every day or, uh, and, you know, they, they are maybe on a, like a, they don't have a desktop device. Like, like the desktop experience is like no longer like the default web experience. We, we, like that tipping point happened like in 2013, 2014. It's, it's people are accessing the internet through mobile devices and, uh, and, and in the emerging markets, which is the highest number of like new engineers, uh, new um, internet users coming on board, they're, they're accessing it on low end uh, mobile devices. And so that means you know, if they have these pre-installed apps that have, th you know, uh, things in their language, you know, everything's in their language and they're pre-installed, it's not going to cost them a lot of data. Like there's no heavy images that they're downloading when they, you know, are using these native apps. Uh, then like they don't, what's the incentive to use the internet, right? And I, I see this with like young kids. I have like siblings that are much younger than me and, you know, they they barely go on browsers because like they they navigate the the web through an app you know through a yeah. series of series of apps you know so when i'm like okay like let's attach this to an email like you know you get a lot of confused faces like what you What's know an email? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah how do you properly search for something or you know so there's a lot of actually there's with digital natives believe it or not the web is not like their strong, strong like suit yeah. well, native apps, right? So, so a we're training all these new internet users to use native apps, right? Because the web is mostly in English; it's not in their language. Is it you know? Is it accessible? It's it's bloated, you know. So there's all of these things. Uh, like now more than ever, like it's important for us to be thinking about like how yeah how to, how to make this a more inclusive platform that works for people all around the world better to like to better serve their needs and like you know. Uh, in a way that's not like expensive and in a way that's, you know, um, just, mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. Make, make the web good. And that's, I'm dropping my mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Alex, you want to give us your, you want to give us your, your top pick in 60 seconds of the, your favorite thing that people can research after this? Oh, p favorite thing. Um, Oh boy. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I'd be curious to know if optional chaining is. I knew you were going to say, I, I, I yeah. thought, I was like, she's going to say optional chaining. Yeah, <laughs> if people really feel that like that syntax is like not confusing for new engineers. Cause I, you know, um, uh, our, our colleague, Leo Balter, who's somebody who, you know, was one of our delegates on the TC39 and he, you know, he's convinced me that like, I, yeah, it's totally actually unneeded. And, you know, and I kind of, and I agree with him now, but that's like a highly unpopular opinion. So yeah, I, you know, there's, yeah it's just pure syntax. It's like syntactic sugar and kind of creates, cool. yeah. So well, y'all should check that out. Uh, you can check that out in the uh, TC39 repo on GitHub if you care more about optional chaining. And uh, you can also 
King Amel on Twitter. <laughs> I'm sure I have long conversations about that. Uh, George, about, what about you? What's your uh, what's your favorite? Let's see if uh, Amel can uh, guess it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think after listening to like Amel's um, last impassioned uh, re kind of response to, to why standards are important, um, I think right now I have to say that probably the modules work and also um, the, the growing uh, interest and focus on developing a standard library are to me possibly the most exciting and, and most like possibly that's today my favorite most exciting most critical um, piece and um, so yeah I, I just think that those uh, those things those features will be um, really really important to to simplifying and stabilizing um, the platform uh, for developers and I think that's really really important so that's my answer cool and and then, where can we find you all on the internet if we want to learn more about web standards or the stuff you guys are doing you ladies are doing um, I'm at jory.com on all of the things. So um, feel free to poke me um, on your favorite social media application. Yeah, I think there's only one social media application that supports poking, uh, yeah. Jory. <laughs> oh. But just joking. Grandma Jory. Grandma Jory. Send me a letter. Yeah. In the mail. <laughs> yeah. No, no. And say at, at Nomad Techie for me on all of the things, Techie with an IE. And thank you so much for hosting us, uh, Tracy. This has been really fun. Yes, I feel like well, this is one of the easiest things because, again, we could go forever in these different topics. And, uh, it's, you know, it's great to see how y'all are so passionate about the work you all do. So thank you so much for doing that because, uh, you know, it, it does make such a huge impact. I mean, uh, you know, just one person standing up and saying, hey, we should do this differently, or hey, maybe we should talk about this differently, or even for people, developers, uh, to be able to look up and, and see strong female leads, you know, within the community to say, oh, I could, I could actually do this too, or even feel like, uh, you know, it's not as abrasive of a uh, community as, you know, it might have been a few years ago. So thank you for all that work. Uh, Again, you can follow these ladies on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leap. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.